Gobi Desert always reminds me that I live on a planet and it's built of stone. It's stripped down to wind and sky and blazing sun and a thousand different colors of rock. It's not the desert most people envision. It's rocks, it's tilted, it's anything but a sandy desert full of dunes. Um, it goes on into China, but the part we're looking at is just in the southern third of Mongolia. You travel all day and you've gone across three or four different mountain ranges or maybe you've gone across a dozen and there's an endless number still in front of you. And you never see another soul. We're headed into the uh, beyond the beyond to look at the Gobi Grizzly that's living at the outer edge of the outermost edge of possibilities. And there are two dozen and perhaps as many as three dozen left on the planet. That's what's here in the Gobi Desert, and only in the Gobi Desert. It may represent the oldest line of the brown bear that existed continuously since the ancestral brown bear arose. In other words, we may be looking at the closest thing to the original brown bear and grizzly, which is a fascinating thing to consider. So here's what we got. There's still a signal kind of coming from up over here. Oh, uh, just, you know. Then we'll go up close. We had and working very closely with Mongolian rangers, scientists, and some of the people in the government. They started off as colleagues, and at this point, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> in each mountain range, we end up putting traps in about four different springs. That's all we can get to. They're 10 to 20 miles apart, and we're bouncing along in a Russian van. It's hell for stout, but it's sure not built for comfort. But on the way, we see the world's last double hump Bactrian camels, we see black-tailed gazelles, we see Argali sheep, we see ibex, wild goats that are clambering around these rocks. It's a feast of, of creatures that somehow bring one of the most barren looking geological landscapes amazingly alive almost every day. And so as is often the case, if you're trying to save a charismatic, a totemic kind of animal like the bear, this amazing life form in the middle of the desert, as you save it, you end up saving quite a majestic wildlife community and much more varied and surprising than most people would ever imagine could exist in a place like the Gobi Desert. I think it's a good reason, a good part of why I keep coming back. I mean, when you get down to 20 to 30 animals, statistically, their chances of making it aren't great. But you can't walk away from this kind of thing. These are the rarest bear in the world. They've got a lot to tell us about how to survive in one of the most extreme environments on the planet. And you can't turn your back, you gotta give it a try. So we're part of that team and we'll go out and, and uh, try not to get lost. Oh yeah, it was good for me too.